Can we put the British Empire on trial? Is it possible that we are the heirs to a genocidal empire? Well, empires by their nature are crimes against humanity because the the imposition of one country's will over the other without the consent of that the the subjects of that violence. Now, because of this, they're inherently evil, basically. But can we say this about the British Empire? Did the British Empire act huma humanely once the Empire had achieved its full territorial expansion? Well, I must say that it did. It did act humanely. In many instances, the civil service, for instance, worked very hard to alleviate the pain and suffering of people in, within its empire. It did lay down the foundations of, of a law code that came from common law and was the, those rights of the Englishmen that were the English gentlemen who, whose and those rights grew up through the common law system that developed through the manor. The British tried to impose this system on all the places that they conquered with varying success. Some ended up in crimes against humanity, such as the genocide against the Boers. And here, my noon, I disagree with you because that was a genocide. Kitchener did say that he wanted to exterminate the Boers or at least stop them having any foreign um, for foreign policy of, the, of their own. He put them in concentration camps. He starved their women and children because that was more efficient than gassing, I suppose, at the time. And with the full intent to completely destroy them. The British Empire, though, overall, always always took the, ro the war seriously. It took it as total war, as unconditional uh, surrender to the, by the enemy of, of the British Empire. There was no half-heartedness in it. So this was quite predictable that this would happen if people took up arms against the British Empire. And in that case, was it the Boers' fault? I don't think so. The Boers were the victims of Rhodes and De Beers and Alfred Milner. But I've said that in my other videos on the British Empire. Can we still put the British Empire on trial for India? When the people in India were the most some of the most oppressed people in the world under the Hindu and Muslim systems of the caste system, a caste system that Islam would like to probably and Hinduism would like to probably use to Im impose its laws and its view of humanity into our own legal system in the British Isles post-Empire. This, I believe, would be completely wrong because it goes against the whole strivance of British law and that is a conservative... Um, I mean that in the in, in the actual meaning of the word rather than the political meaning of the word, a grudging, ex slow acceptance of the natural rights, right? Because whereas Thomas Paine was talking about the natural rights of men uh, being life, liberty, property, the pursuit of happiness, um, the right of free expression the rights of life, uh, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And, and also, thus, the European Union came along later, partly bo born out of the British Empire, which gave us economic rights. Um, Post-war, we received the um, economic rights from the Labour government, the right to strike, the right to own your own property and also the right to vote for people from progressively the right to vote was extended this was all the conversation that happened between Hobbes and um, Tom Paine 
Thomas Hobbes and Tom Paine. Um, and this, the Hobbesian view of the inequality of men, that men by their nature were savage and needed control, was what the empire imposed on the uh, rest of the world, but not for the control's sake, but for order. But for the order that allowed the pure commerce and the free trade that the empire thrived on, or so it said. What in fact it was building was a huge block, just like the EU in the, in, in the Eurosceptics would say, um, to with a common tariff. But what was not achieved, what the virtuous circle that the EU has, is that, as my noon said, Jeremy said, that the there is a virtuous circle between the member states and the EU, each checking the other. But what happened within the British Empire was there was no federalisation of the British Empire. So therefore you didn't have Westminster checking the advances of the British Empire. And that is what allowed men like Rhodes and Alfred Milner to keep expanding the empire beyond the limits of British power. Because by, by its nature, an empire is an overextension of power. It is an overextension because you reach a high point of economic um, production caused by the, the Industrial Revolution. Men who made their money out of the Industrial Revolution sought to expand the empire for their own personal interests. Therefore, it had nothing to do with patriotism. It had everything to do with self-interest. And the manor system was thus imposed on places like India, Africa, where it became plantations. What else was the manor system of Anglo-Saxon England and Norman England but plantations? And this medievalist, feudalist kind of system still continued to grow and it still grows to this day. But it's under many different layers of democratic and legal control and restraint, which have gradually evolved rather with with the Hobbesian view, rather than the American view, which Thomas Paine took, where you had to invent a constitution. The Hobbesian view of the British Empire has still continued on to this day to the point where people boo the phrase human rights how insane is that we are now even more liberal even more progressive even more socialist than the united states was when it was born in 1776 and this is something that should be praised you know not taken taken as a as a boo word and that was said by um, damien green a british conservative minister you know, it just shows you that the that, that America and Britain are extremely different because of the different routes that they've taken. And did was although I despise Thomas Hobbes, um, and I despise many aspects of the British Empire. In some ways, he was right. And Thomas Paine, as although he is he tried to make a utopian system was perhaps not completely not completely right but he was right in most of his the things he did say but overall did the british empire um is it it can it be put on trial is it guilty of genocide but certainly guilty of genocide in the case of the boers as i said in the case of india it was suppressing an already feudalistic system in Africa, it was suppressing complete barbarism and cannibalism. So, therefore, these things were good that they it did suppress those. It was a shame that the British Empire didn't expand to China, and then perhaps millions of Chinese people wouldn't have been killed by their own governments. You could have said that it would be brilliant for the British Empire to have expanded all over the world, because it did bring a better life for millions and millions of people. But overall, the British Empire created the world that we live in today, and that includes America. Thank you very much.